Hello, welcome to the whole new world of learning English. I am Pratishtha and I have been taking you into this tour since long and I have been dealing with so many topics that you want. We are always open to suggestions. We are always open to your cue. We are learning how to congratulate the conversation. We are also learning how to describe stories, how famous for its culture to a female. If a female gives a hand trick to you, it's absolutely correct. But other than that, moving down to the, the other ways of introducing and greeting each other. In India, we generally wish, wish others by saying hi, hello. Even that's not our culture, but with the flow of years, we have been taking that and using we meet for the first time or we wish uh, strangers or we wish our friends in this particular way. Now, if, if it's when do we say good morning? We say good morning till 12 o'clock. After 12 o'clock, we are not supposed to say good morning. Then it turns down to good afternoon. Now, even good afternoon has a limit. We cannot say good afternoon after 4 p.m. So from 12 to 4, we can say good afternoon. But after that, we have to again change and say good evening that is the way we use to greet each other when we meet in the different time slots now good night does not start the moment it's dark it starts after eight o'clock so make sure that if you meet someone at eight o'clock you say good night or when we are it's not the way of wishing actually it's the way of saying bye bye so remember, there is a difference between wishing someone and saying bye to someone. Moving down to the next uh, set of greetings or the way of saying thank you, we have to say thank you at many situations and we do say that also. But what are the ways and when do we say thank you in a particular way, right? So there, there are situations when we... Um, are are winning something and that is because of someone so the thank you means different in that situation so the basic ways of saying thank you is thank you so much thanks a ton we are very happy with you and then you say thanks a ton for your help thanks a million another way of saying it's just the vocabulary you need to know and you need to go through and learn and use them in your day-to-day -day conversations because uh, no matter what we give you it's always how you reproduce it. It's always how you absorb it. And then how do you put it up across uh, people who you meet? Thanks a million. Hey, thank you, buddy. You're the best. Now this you cannot use for your boss. It is restricted to your friends. When you use the word buddy, it is understood that you are using this for a friend of yours. You are amazing. Another way of saying thank you, it does not involve the words thank you, but it involves the way of saying gratitude or passing on gratitude. Gratitude unlimited, a wonderful and very soft way of saying thank you. That goes for a big thank you party. Again, this is not only just using the words thank you, but also giving up a party because the person is uh, benefited a lot from you and that is where you say thank you. I really appreciate your effort and gesture. So again, here you're not using the word thank you, but you are saying thank you in a way, in a gesture for the effort that the other person has taken up. You came like an angel. So supposedly somebody helped you out with a very big thing, or maybe uh, it was blood donation, or maybe it was helping you at the right time. So you say you came like an angel, like a fairy. You came like a savior. I am touched. So this is the way you never expected somebody to help you, but somebody has helped you. And then you say, I am touched. My gratitude knows no bonds. So that is how you say that there, there is a flow of gratitude from your heart and uh, it has no limits that the other person has helped you in such a wonderful way that you do not find even words to say thank you, but your heart is full of gratitude. I don't know how to thank you. Again, the person has really touched your heart and the person has really helped you in a wonderful way. Now, you really don't know because thank you are very 
the, the words are very small, the words are very short, your gesture is coming out, but then you don't know how to use, because the help given by the other person was really very great. And now using the words, just thank you, you feel they are too less for the help that the other person has given you. I have no words to say thank you. Now again, this is the way wherein uh, you are very happy with the person and you, you really are free, feeling short of words to say thank you. Congratulating someone. Another portion of life wherein uh, we all want to get congratulated. We all want to get celebrated. We all want to be celebrities. We all Now, what happens is it's always a give and take policy. You give something, you get something. Now, while congratulating someone, you can you can use as, as many words as you want. You can use whatever words as you want. But the situations are different. Now, if you are into a casual atmosphere, you can congratulate someone in a different way. Whereas if you are into a formal uh, situation, you have to use different words. Now, what are they? Let us learn them. Congratulations and bravo! Now, here your intonation, the way you express, everything matters. Now, how does this matter? Congratulations and bravo. If you say like this, nobody would appreciate that, right? So you have to use the complete energy. You have to give your expressions. You have to show what you feel. You, your actions, your voice should also mean the same. Now, this is a casual way of congratulating someone. So you can use your hands. You can say, yay, congratulations and bravo. This calls for celebrating. Congratulations. So I have again put a different set of intonations to the same word. <gasps> you did it. So proud of you. Now This is another way. I knew it. It was just a matter of time. Well done. Another casual way of saying congratulations. Now, if we are being formal, congratulations on your well-deserved success. Now, here, your body language, your, your intonation plays a different role. You have to use intonations, but it is on a different level. Heartfelt congratulations to you. A very subtle way of congratulating someone. Warmest congratulations on your achievement. So I'm feeling happy and I'm feeling proud of you. And I hereby congratulate you by saying this. Congratulations and best wishes for the next adventure. No, the life does not stop here. You have to keep on moving and you have to keep on winning hearts. So pleased to see you accomplishing great things. So that is where you are and that is what you deserve. So I'm very happy. There are a few people in your life whom you meet who are not very happy with your success, but they are not the world. You are dealing with everyone in this world. And if you are good, the entire world is good to you. That's, that's again my perception of looking at things. You might have something different, but do not take that. You have to congratulate someone. He has really put down his efforts. And every time if it's different and every time if it's effective, people are going to love you all the more congratulating someone happy for you i'm happy for you is another warm enthusiastic way to congratulate someone right so like i told you there are different ways these are a few ways that we are presenting to you another set of uh, congratulations which are casual hope you're thrilled about your good job i'm sure i'm sure happy for you right hooray we just couldn't be happier for you so we are happiest. Now, this is another way. We do not generally use that in India, but it's always good to learn new things. It's always good to keep updating ourselves. It makes me so happy to think about your promotion. I couldn't have come to a more deserving person. person. So this is how you congratulate someone for getting promoted into their jobs. Uh, a more formal way of congratulation. Feeling so much joy for you today. What an impressive ach achievement. Now, don't you like to hear such words? We do, right? So when once you start giving it to someone, the other person would also learn from you and the other person would, would also give you the same. We hope you can feel all the pride and happiness surrounding you as the head of medical school. Now, he is moving down to his medical uh, degree and he is going to be a doctor and that is where you are congratulating someone. So just uh, take a note of all these things so that you can use them in a wonderful way and get all the appreciations in this world. Simply overjoyed to hear your good news. Now, this good news can be buying a new house. This good news can be getting married. This good news can be buying a new car or anything in this world. So 
don't you feel like congratulating someone in a wonderful way other than using the same monotonous way of congratulating now indirect ways of saying congratulations there are ways when you do not know the person uh, personally or you do not have such relations with them so then we can use a few words if you do not have to say sentences we have got a set of words which you can use some set of phrases that you can use and say congratulations or wish victory to people like wonderful amazing impressive awesome beautiful now these are the common words which we also know you you might have used them also in your conversations but still it was my duty to tell you make you aware of the words that you're using whether they're correct or incorrect adjectives these are the adjectives that we have been using now ata ata is another word of english which can be used wonderful ata boy ata girl so this is how you also congratulate someone clapping yes we give a big round of applause we say bravo we take a bow we encore we say three cheers these are again in direct ways of saying congratulations so uh, there are situation wherein you cannot use words so you can use these gestures now hats off to you here goes you good show good for you good on you great job excellent job aren't these words boosting your confidence aren't these words telling you to do more good nice work nice job see the entire day we work just to listen to these two words good job we all love to listen that so why not start giving it back so if we start giving it to others people would in return give it to us sometimes it might be fake also but then the words don't matter way to go so this is not something that you have done for your life you have a lot more to achieve way to shine well done well deserved you inspire me you amaze me these are another set of words that you can use to say congratulations or to to uh, present the person with your happiness or to tell what you are feeling about the achievement that that person has done now we talk about colors now if it comes to colors it's uh, very difficult to know how girls define colors and how men define colors so uh, that difference would always be there but still it's important to keep ourselves updated and it's important to learn every day and that is the learning for today that we are talking about colors over here now you do not park your car on the double yellow lines so that's the rule uh, if you uh, look at so many countries they have different rules so one rule amongst uh, one of such countries that i visited uh, was you have to take care of the yellow lines you cannot stand out of the yellow lines so if, even if you are waiting for your vehicle you need to stand inside those yellow lines blue the sky is not less blue because the blind man does not see now this is a phrase so the sky does not change its color it's it's blue but the shades do change now how do we describe those shades is really important if it comes to being a creative person or if it comes to using those colors into digital marketing or there are many 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 places where in uh, interior designing is another place where you play a lot with the colors now if you just stick down to the uh, color prism or those seven eight colors which were conventionally used uh, before uh it might hamper your creativity it might hamper your productivity also at times now red should i buy a red car or a blue car now red is a very uh, common color and uh, we generally can correlate uh, it to ourselves even you can see the background but it is not red it is a mixture all right black the black ox has a trot on his foot now if you have to describe someone also you need color so these are the different ways you enhance your communication you give boost to your communication his eyes are azure now what are azure azure is another shade of eye i think i should not give you the meaning of this i expect you to ask me and then i would follow down into the chat window by giving you the answers so this is a quiz for you ivory ivory my shirt is more ivory color than white now the statement itself explains it's uh l shades now white is milky white white is uh, sharp white white is uh, pure white so these are the colors that you uh, connect to white color now here in ivory ivory is a palish tinge 
of white. Teal, light yellow or light blue teal are good for colors. Now again, I, I restrict myself by telling you what is teal. So I would expect you to put down questions on the chat window so that I can explain you there. Purple, his face turned purple with rage. Navy blue, navy blue is again connected to the Navy of India. And uh, we uh, do not need much more explanation about this color. If we look at the navy uniform, we can get the navy blue color. Pea green, again peas that we eat, those, those that color is called pea green color. Generally, this color is found everywhere in this rainy season. Gray is another, is intermediate between black and white. Orange, orange is a funny combo. Now, you have uh, orange also as a fruit and orange also as a color. Maroon, she wore black tights and maroon socks that stuck up above her boots. So that is just a way of telling the color. Coral, fuchsia, wheat, lime, crimson, khaki, magenta, old, plum, olive, cyan. These are all different colors that we use in our day-to-day -day life. Now, how do we use them? Where do we use them? There are different areas wherein we use these colors. And I have also told you before what are the areas that we use into basically uh, into the fashion industry, yes. Into the cloth industry, yes. Uh, fashion designing, interior designing, looking at the lights, putting in the arrangement. So you have to be aware of what are the colors, colors you are dealing with. Now, every color cannot be yellow. Every color cannot be green. If you just say green, person can get confused and he might think about dark green, light green, off green, sea green. So there are variations. So you need to keep yourself updated about what are the colors that you are using so that the person standing next to you or a person whom you are dealing with gets a correct information about what exactly are you wanting to put up, right? Now, crimson red is another way of using red. Now, this crimson red, if you say, if, if you do not know about crimson red, it, it is very difficult to understand which red is he talking about. So you have to keep yourself updated. This, this is another uh, set of sentences wherein we are using colors. She is wearing a coral necklace. The sky is blue and fuchsia, right? So that's another uh, orange color. The fields are yellow with wheat. So the color is also used to describe the place. The fields are yellow with wheat. So the wheat is entirely grown up and the field looks yellow. The guy in khaki shorts was, was carrying a video camera. Now see, uh, no other boy was carrying the video camera, but the boy in the khaki shorts. So it becomes easier for you to search also. It's not only knowing the color for the painters, but we also need colors in all aspects of our life. If, if I say light yellow or light blue teal are good for colors, again, they have a different meaning. Who's the woman dressed in hot pink? So hot pink, again, we don't mean dark pink, but it's a different color. You can note down these colors and go and search on the net. And we will also update that on our website, which will help you to know more about them. Talking about shopping. Shopping is uh, something that helps you take away your stress. Shopping is something that you do that starts with and uh, it's the most important element of every festival, every celebration, every enjoyment. Now, when we are talking about shopping, how do we start? We love shopping, like, right? And if it comes down with a label of sale, it's all the more fascinating. We, we just cannot stop going shopping on any and every every occasion. It's ridiculous how early you start Christmas shopping. No, it's not. I have good reasons to shop early. Now, I told you, every festival, be it Christmas, be it Eid, be it Diwali, be it Holi, we start our celebration with something called a shopping. You can take your time, look at the deal, get hot products before they sell out and avoid the crowds. So this fellow is more interested in going to shopping before the festival, quite, quite long before the festival, because he believes that the more festival approaches, the more it's difficult to get into the market and get the desired things for him. Now look at this person. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Have you already bought all your presents for this year? So this person in the brown t-shirt or the brown sweater or the brown pullover 
wants to ask him whether he's done shopping for today or for this year, for this Christmas. So look at what the answer this fellow gives. I did that years ago. I'm shopping for Christmas 2025 now. Look at the person. Let us go and meet him. We are going to get wonderful gifts from him. You can see the number of years that he has uh, placed into. I feel so. He is a very crazy man. He loves shopping, but he does not want to give away those gifts to anyone. These almiras is full of gifts that he has bought in 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. But I think he has not gifted it to any one of us. So it's not only important to take away your uh, buy your gifts, but it is also important to give it away to someone. What is the use if we are not giving those gifts to someone, right? So uh, this is all about a small joke that we uh, took about shopping. Now asking things, we go to the mall. Nowadays, the mall culture is on the boom. So how do we do, deal with this culture? Now, every person standing over there uh, do talk in English and the uh, visitors also talk in English. And we have so many things that we have to deal only in English. So asking for things in the shop, if we go there and we want to look out for something. So how do we say that? Do you have any biscuits that are made up of wheat? I am looking for a healthy diet biscuit set. I wonder if you could help me with a red shirt. What does the shopkeeper say? Now, I'm sorry, we are out of stock. Now, if he does not have that, he would say that. I'm sorry, that's the last one. So you do not have choice. You have to take whatever is given to you. I'm sorry, that's all we have left with. So if you if you want a pink color uh, shirt and the person has some orange shade, shirt so if he does not have more you have to take what is left over now what a salesperson say when we are moving around in the mall you might have come across this uh, situation wherein the salesperson comes and asks you can i help you are you looking for anything in particular but uh, if you do not have any plans to shop and you have just moved into the uh, shopping mall to uh, spend some quality time or to choose something for a friend so if you're moving around you can answer saying that i'm just looking so I, I, I do not have any plans right now, but I am just looking at few things. I'm just browsing. But I'm, I'm just going through these things so that I can plan for them in the near future. That is another way to uh, respond to the question asked by the salesperson. Can I help you? Asking about things in the shop. Now, there are, there are different things in the shop. There are different things in the mall uh, which you can buy, which you have been there to buy. So do you have this in another size? Now, if you go and pick up something in S and you want an M or you want an L, you obviously have to go and uh, talk to the salesperson. You have to talk to the person who's concerned with that department and the person will help you out. Do you have this in another color? Like I told you, you have to go and tell what do you demand or what is it that you're looking forward for? If you are clear in that, now this also needs the knowledge of color. This also needs the knowledge of language and both the things are covered in this session. I hope it is helping you out with all, all the queries that you have. Now, uh, if I buy something uh, which deals with electronics, I just need to ask them whether does this product come with a guarantee because I don't know if I'm spending some bucks on this, it goes home and it breaks off or it refuses to get on. So uh, I need to ask them whether it's refundable, whether can I get, get another piece replaced or what is, what is the policy uh, that comes with this so that... Uh, if, if I do not like this or if it's like, uh, I, I would like to return it. So what are the policies? We need to ask that. Can I bring this back if it's not in right size? Now, today I might be feeling it's proper, but after going home, I feel it's not fitting me. It's not suiting me. If somebody gives me a, a suggestion that do not buy this color or do not buy this size, then I have to get back to uh, the store and return it and get something back. So I need to confirm paying what the shopkeeper says. Now, this is a big story, big issue, which comes down to everyone now paying, paying cash. So uh, sometimes there is no cash with the customer. Sometimes there is no cash with the uh, cash keeper. So uh, you, he asks you, do you have anything smaller? Anything smaller in the sense, some uh, denomination, lower denomination notes. So you have to deal with that. Now paying, sorry, I, I'm so sorry, I do not have any small change. So if you do not have a change, these problems occur when you are not paying with the Paytm or ATM or your plastic money, uh, wherein you are giving your normal money exchange, you find these issues. 
I don't have anything smaller. That means that I, I have just this bigger note and I do not have a smaller note to this. Then again, if there is no uh, point in uh, exchanging these notes, we can ask the person that can I pay using the credit card? Uh, can I use my plastic card? Can I use plastic money? These are the different ways to deal with the shopping area. Talking about hobbies, we all are interested in something or the other, but we do not know how to deal with that. So if we are into a first conversation with someone, like breaking the ice, uh, talking to someone whom you do not know, we generally start with this and we start asking about the hobbies. So what do you like doing? What sort of hobbies do you have? What do you uh, do when you get, get some free time? So these are the questions that you, uh, that you also expect a, a stranger to ask to you. And so you should also have proper answers. So when I, and when I have spare time, I read books. When I have spare time, I write something. Or when I have a longer spare time, I go off to sleep. So that's my hobby. Uh, it sounds funny, but it does. I'm interested in thread work. I'm keen on swimming. I'm into modeling. I enjoy running. So these are a few things that we do as a hobby. You can give also more information about hobbies and interests. That I like arts and crafts. I'm a creative, practical person. And I like doing different things. So this is another way of answering to the question like, oh, what do you like doing? I enjoy being physically active and spend a lot of time playing sports and team games. So it does not only answer the question that is asked, but it also tells about the attitude that you carry, that you are concerned with your health, uh, that you love sports, you are very much into team games. So it shows your team spirit. It shows your leadership quality also. So they are not just answers. They are words to impress somebody. Also, based on which situation you are into, where are you asked, how are you asked, who are you responding to? Why do you like your hobby? Now, this is another question which is asked. So I, I like my hobby because it gives me a boost. It takes me up into my mood. It keeps me fit. It gets me out of the house. Now, if I love gymming, I cannot sit home and do gymming. I have to go out. And once we do such physical activities, what happens is you get refreshed. You get a kind of different energy that is needed to move ahead. Now, all of my hobbies are very creative. I have always enjoyed painting and drawing. Now, painting and drawing is something that is also uh, that also helps you releasing your stress. And it has been proven down by many universities and many researchers that if you are stressed, if you just take few colors and start painting. You don't have to be a great painter or you do not have to start painting up with somebody's face. You can paint nature, you can paint anything that you want. Just play around with the colors and it does wonders. I enjoy spending time making things like clothes. So uh, this person might be, he is a very creative person and uh, he does not find time to uh, take care of his passion. His passion is designing clothes. So that is what he does as a hobby. That is what he does uh, in his free time. Now, you can also use different words like creative, fascinating, practical, cheap, enjoyable, relaxing to uh, talk about your hobbies. Now, the grammatical way of talking about your hobbies is uh, we use like plus the jiren in kanji form. Like, I like fishing. Now, fishing here is not a verb, okay? Now, when we go to the uh, different places, what are these places called? A departmental store is different from a supermarket. A grocer is different from a green grocer. A butcher is one, someone who sells meat. A baker is one who sells, who sells breads and cakes. Similar are the words like fishmonger, chemist, drugstore, pharmacy, news agent. These are the different uh, words that are used for different people. So not everyone is a shopkeeper, okay? A stationer is one who sells paper and goods. Now a bookshop or uh, a bookstore. Bookstore is a place where you get books. Market, we, we generally go to the market and we get a lot of vegetables and clothes. Describing stories. Now stories, we all love stories. We have been listening to stories in all of our childhood. And uh, these are the stories that help us grow also. These are the stories that gave a lot of moral to us also. Generally, uh, in olden days, we had our grannies who used to tell us stories. But have you ever thought about what is the tense that is used in narrating a story? It was always ED form or the past form, right? 
so that is how you describe a story we use past tense always to narrate a story like once upon a time sometime before now these characters always are uh, lived out or these are the characters who were there in the past and you cannot tell a story without using a past tense so you have to resist yourself by using some tenses which becomes very difficult for the listener to understand whether you are telling about something that is happening or whether you are telling something about the future or whether you are telling something about the past simple past tense is the most easiest way to narrate a story now while narrating a story you also have to take care of few things like you have to be consistent you cannot switch over uh, talking about something in the past and then moving down to future you have to use particular words the way of narrating a story is also very 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 important do not use progressive forms a lot like she is driving no she was driving she drove to the destination now you won't go wrong using simple past for most of most of your fictions and actually readers do expect that because that becomes easy to understand that you are narrating a story okay thank you for being patient listeners and we do appreciate the questions from you we are here to answer them all and uh, hope you have enjoyed today's session wherein we learned about colors we learned about saying thank you we learned about how to congratulate someone we also did learn about uh, how to deal with different situations hello and welcome to the whole new world of learning english i am pratishtha and i have been taking you into this tour since long and i have been dealing with so many topics that you want we are always open to suggestions we are always open to your questions we are happy to answer them every time we pick up a topic which is really useful to you and